Hi, everybody. Uh, everyone's coming into the room right now. Let me just get everything set up here. We're going to live stream this on Facebook uh, as well. So let me make sure I'm... Can you... Um... I'm not sure I'm the host, Anana. Can you make me the host? I think because you were the first one who logged in. Of course. Thank you. Uh, while we're waiting, thank you for making me the host. While we're waiting, I um, just want to say hi. I'm Kat from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Um, we're just going to wait a few minutes for everyone to roll in and give me another minute to set up here. Um, but while we are killing some time, I'm super curious, first of all, where you're tuning in from, if you want to drop that in the chat. And um, the next question is kind of a fun one. How many of you have, or do you have a broiler that can be set to different temperatures or is it just on or off? Um, I have a broiler that's just on or off and I didn't know that there were broilers with different temperatures. So if you ever see a recipe on the blog that was developed that doesn't have a broiler temperature, use the high temperature. That's the only one that my oven knows apparently. Yeah, Sonana has a higher low oven too. My oven, I guess, is just very analog. So um, for those of you just joining in, we're waiting a few minutes, but drop in the chat where you're tuning in from and does your broiler have a higher low setting or is it just one setting like mine, which feels very ancient now. A lot of people look like they have high low. Um, all right, give me one moment. I'm just gonna set this live to Facebook where we are streaming. Let's see. We're going to wait one more minute here. Um, and let me, I'm about to stream this from my personal homepage, which is not what I want to do. Um, if you just missed my question to get us chatting and started um, in the chat. I'm curious to know, does your broiler have a temperature setting or is it just on or off like mine? Um, mine is just on or off. So um, let's see. Ooh, this is not what I want to do. I might not be able to stream live on Facebook today because I have been misled by my tech team. Um, well, that's okay. So um, what we can do is go ahead and get started. Wait, I want to look in the chat before I, I start talking. Everyone has a higher low setting. Oh, except for Gerilyn, you have one setting just like me. Um, well, um, hello, Irving. Good to see you again. Um, Matt, if you just want to give the team a heads up that I will not be live streaming on Facebook because I actually don't have access um, like I thought I did, that would be very helpful. Um, <laughs> okay, so I did mention this earlier, but if you ever see a recipe on our blog that has um, no setting for your broiler, just use a high setting because a lot of those recipes I'm doing and I didn't know that there were different temperatures on different ovens. So, all right, um, lest I continue to go on about this fascination I have with broilers, um, let's get started with the event today. Um, I'm Kat, I'm part of the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. And I'm very excited to be joined by my colleague and the Wild Alaskan Company chef of the day, Sonana. So um, to kick off the new year, Sonana is going to be making a recipe from the new Live Better Wild meal plan. Um, I'll tell you more about the meal plan a little bit later on, um, but first, uh, let's get to some housekeeping. If you would like to follow along with the captions, you can go ahead to and do that um, at the bottom of your Zoom screen. It should say captions, or it might be under a menu that says more with three dots. Um, feel free to follow along that way. If at any point you have questions during the event, I'll ask you to drop those into the Q&A button rather than, rather than the chat button. We'll still find it in the chat, but um, if there's a lot of chatter there, I just want to make sure we don't miss your questions. So the Q&A uh, button will help us field questions to myself or to um, my other colleague who is moderating. Um, and um, lastly, if you need to leave before today's event is over, don't worry, we will send you a link in the next day or so um, into your inbox. And um, I will also be posting this recording 
probably in the next few hours on Facebook as a YouTube link since I'm not able to live stream yet again. Um, so let's go ahead and let me see. I'll drop a link to, well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to drop a link right now. Um, so we're joined today by Matt, um, who is one of our teammates from the member experience team. If Matt wants to come on to say hi, um, you might have seen Matt here before. Hi, Matt. How are you? Happy New Year. <laughs> um, so Matt and I will be here to help answer some of your questions uh, along with Sanana. Um, all right. Now let's get to the recipe. Um, the baked Pacific cod with garlicky breadcrumb crust is the recipe of the day. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link here in the chat for that. Um, Sanana, if you want to uh, go ahead and take over and get started cooking this incredible recipe. Yes, thank you so much, Kat. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome. Um, I'm Sanana. I'm the Director of Member Success here at the Wild Alaskan Company. Welcome to my kitchen in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Um, as Kat mentioned, I'll be making the lovely baked Pacific cod with garlicky breadcrumb crust. Um, and then I will go ahead and start with our ingredients that you can see here on my chopping board. I have um, one piece of Pacific cod. You can, the recipe calls for two, but if you need to make one, you can just have, um, you know, the rest of the ingredients that are on there. So I have uh, my garlic here. This is pan core breadcrumbs, but you can use regular. I have olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. And if you'd like to add any other seasonings, I also have my parsley um, and then the cherry tomatoes are optional as well, which will be going on the side as a vegetable. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with mixing this up. You want to add your breadcrumbs here. Everything's going to go into a mixing bowl. And then we'll go ahead and add the finely chopped garlic as well. The recipe also does call for uh, grated Parmesan. I'm making a dairy, the dairy free version today. So I'm not adding the cheese, but if you'd like, you can add the cheese, which will give it a more crispy effect with your breadcrumbs as it comes up really nice. So I've mixed the breadcrumbs, garlic, parsley, and olive oil that'll drizzle in here. And then I'll add some salt and pepper to taste. Again, feel free to add any other seasonings that you enjoy. Then I'll go ahead and give that a nice mix. I'll mix it up really nice. And I will take my cod here and put it on my baking sheet. I have the oven currently set to 400 degrees. So as you can see here, this is my pod. And then this mixture will go right on top. It's super easy to make. Actually, before I do that, I also want to lay some of my lemon slices underneath. And then you can pat down the mixture around it, on top of it. You can also use melted butter if you prefer. Um, I like the olive oil option as it has the healthy fats in it, but you don't have to, and you don't have to melt the butter, but feel free to use melted butter if you like the taste of butter more. And then what I'll do is I'll add my cherry tomatoes that are cut in half around so they can soak up that nice flavor as well. And then you just want to sprinkle a little more olive oil on top. 
if you're using butter, you can sprinkle more butter on top. So I'll go ahead and put this in the oven. Again, my oven is currently set to 400 degrees and I'm gonna set a timer for six minutes. If you have a thinner filet, you wanna do six minutes. If it's a little bit of a thicker filet, you can do eight minutes um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna broil it for a minute or two after. So let me get this in the oven. And I have my timer set. Kat, if you wanted to go ahead. Actually, I have a question for you. I'm um, just confirming that you are using a conventional bake for your oven versus a, conven a convection bake. Someone noticed the sheet pan you're using is good for air frying or convection baking. Yes, I do have, mine is currently on a convection bake oven, but um, you can do, of course you can do traditional or whichever you have at home. Um, great, because, you know, if my burly doesn't have a high or low setting, it's because I don't have a convention or co convection option. Um, another question I have for you is, do you have a suggestion for a coating for someone who is gluten free? Yes, we actually, what you could do is use gluten free breadcrumbs. Um, and you can still add, depending on the type of Parmesan that you're getting, but uh, you can make it dairy free, gluten free, whichever your preferences. Um, great. And I think that's it for questions, unless we missed anything. Um, well, since we have a few minutes to um, bake this fish, um, I'm going to go ahead and take the spotlight here for a moment. So um, I mentioned earlier that this recipe is featured in the Live Better Wild Meal Plan. Some of you might have signed up for this already. Um, it's a meal plan um, that uh, you will receive via email. If you signed up for it, you might've already spelled through it. Um, so I'll just say it's a meal plan that's inspired by the new year. It's a time when many of us are um, you know, often making or remaking resolutions to live better, whether that's eating healthier, taking better care of our bodies, being kinder to ourselves. So um, I know there are a lot of ways to do that uh, depending on you know, what you need. Um, but as a recipe team, and actually just as a fish family in general, we are 100% behind this idea that a really nice home cooked meal of wild caught seafood can help you bring some of those resolutions to fruition. So, um, you know, health, happiness, deliciousness, um, whether you're cooking for yourself or sharing that with some family. So um, I just want to give you a sneak peek at the Live Better Wild meal plan. If you haven't seen it yet, let me um, see if I can share my screen without melting down here. Um, all right. So um, like I said, some of you might have already received this in your inbox, but um, it's basically this really beautiful PDF guide um, that breaks things down into a weekly let's say essential skill or learning or um, technique that I think uh, will really help you eat fish more often, add more seafood to your diet. So um, this is something that you can do anytime. Um, January, of course, is a very good seasonal time to do this, um, but just a little sneak peek at um, what we're doing. Week one, since this is week one um, for us, we are starting with essential pantry staples um, so that you can have fish, any fish, any day. It doesn't really matter which box you have. Um, there are recipes for each of these. This is just a sneak peek at some of the other essentials that we are choosing. So I love breadcrumbs, whether they're glutinous or gluten-free. Um, it's really nice to have crunch with fish, almost always. Who doesn't like crunchy with fish? Um, capers and dried spices are also a few of our favorite essentials. So we included these as pantry staples that you can keep on um, on hand so that you can have delicious fish. There um, are options for if you have a salmon box or a white fish box, uh, depending on what you're choosing. If you have a combo box, you can kind of mix and match um, as you like. So that's just a little sneak peek at week one. Um, and it's uh, recipes to get you through the whole month. I'm not gonna make you dizzy by scrolling through all of these. I'm very excited to um, be able to share this with you. So um, I would highly suggest 
signing up to receive the Live Better Wild meal plan, especially if you're new to fish um, or you're just someone who finds that they need a little extra push to start new routines. I know we all uh, can use a push from time to time, especially when we're building a new routine, not easy. Um, even if it's something that you enjoy doing and want to do and love to do, if it's not routine already, it's hard. I, I don't know, that's like the eternal question of New Year's, right? So um, if you are a self-starter who's really confident in cooking fish, um, I think it's a great meal plan just to inspire you. Some of these recipes might be familiar um, to you if you are you know, very familiar with our blog and library of recipes. Other ones might just be resurfacing with like a pretty new picture and um, a couple of tweaks. So it's like a mini digital cookbook basically. So um, I think that uh, today's recipe is one of my first recipes that I ever made using fish from Wild Alaskan Company. So it has a special place in my heart um, and my stomach. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't made this one yet, um, definitely a good place to start. If you um, have, if you're watching this today, and um, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen actually, because nothing left to see here. You can sign up for the meal plan if you want to see the rest. But um, if you have a wild salmon box in your freezer right now, and you're watching this episode of how to make whitefish, um, you could actually swap out the salmon for the cod. Um, just keep an eye on the cook time. It might need a few fewer minutes. Um, did I say a few fewer minutes? Um, because that's what I meant. So um, there's also a um, analogous recipe that combines salmon and breadcrumbs, except it's like a pesto topping. So anyway, just have fun and kind of pick what sounds good to you. Um, they're both equally delicious. So uh, in addition to, ooh, actually, thank you for asking, how do you sign up for the meal plan? Because I meant to drop the link in the chat, which I'm doing right now. Um, this will take you to a blog page. You just have to scroll down and there's like a little email field um, that you can type your email into. We already probably have your email because you know, did I say email? Um, email because, um, you know, you're here at this event. But um, this is a guide that's going to come straight to your inbox. You'll also get one weekly reminder every week um, in your inbox that just is there to keep you inspired and, and get you to stay cooking. We're not gonna spam you, it's just an extra little push. So um, the next three live events are also themed around uh, recipes from this guide. So, um, you know, I invite you to meet us here again to live better wild next week. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about that um, right now or later, if you, you know, are not receiving your guide and you've signed up for it, just reach out to the member experience team. We'll, we'll get you set up. Um, I believe, Sanana, you just went to check on the fish. Have any um, updates for us here? Yes. Yeah, so the six minute timer went off and I went ahead and set it to broil on high. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a minute to, or two and see how brown it gets. Um, so in the meantime, um, when we do broil the fish at this point, we want to be careful to not burn the breadcrumbs. Depending on your oven and how evenly your broiler cooks it, this can take a little less or more time. My oven is super strong, so I'm keeping a close eye. Um, the fish will be flaky when it's done, so you'll be able to tell. You want to make sure, again, that your broiler grate is set up to close, like it's closer to the broil before you turn on the oven so that it's easier uh, for you to move up. Um, as it should be closer to the, to the top of it. And then, um, you know, once it's ready, we'll go ahead and see how it looks and taste um, it. So I have a quick question that I see here in the comments. How close to the broiler should the fish be when you're setting up your broiling grate? So I actually have mine like three quarters above the halfway mark. So it's like on the second to last one underneath the broiler. So I would say as, as close as you can. Um, I, I wouldn't put it like directly underneath if you're, especially if you're not able to keep a close eye on it because it can burn easily, but you wanna get it as close to as possible right after that first. Um, speaking of that, if you wanna check on the I'm fish, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, I know that when I'm setting up my broiler grate in my oven, I put it on the highest rack which is about four to six inches away from the broiler element itself. Um, I've seen broilers where it's super close, like three inches, that's a little too close. Four to six inches is usually a good rule of thumb. And on most ovens that I've encountered, um, it, that's usually the highest rack setting. Um, definitely you can move the rack 
while you're cooking, but it's just going to be super hot. So try to remember to do that before you turn the oven on. Um, and I think I see fish in the screen here. So let me go ahead and switch cameras and show everyone this deliciousness. I love seeing the bubbles on their Sanana. Well, she must be um, taking care of something, but you can see that the pod already looks super flaky right around the edges there, um, which is really, really um, making me hungry right now. <laughs> okay, so now that this is ready, I had like a loud timer on there. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it into my baking sheet. You can, I'm gonna, sorry, my baking dish. You can see that the cod is very crispy and right on top with that. Um, what's great is that the breadcrumbs got nice and crispy, but the actual fish looks very tender and not overcooked because we timed it so well. Wow, that looks really good. Also, don't lose the fish by showing us on camera. Let me <laughs> move, move the camera to something where you can hold the fish. Um, that looks here. delicious. Oh, wow. And that just flakes so beautifully, as you can see here. Super moist. Let's try this. Mmm. Oh, wow. It got such a great taste. I could have added a little bit more salt, but the fish is amazing. And again, it's so nice and soft and tender on the inside. It's flaking very, very easily. And um, it really absorbed the lemon, lemon I put underneath, um, which has a great flavor as well. Any questions about this? Uh, yeah, actually, that I think that kind of answers a question. Um, does placing lemon wedges underneath the fish before putting it in the oven, is that for flavor or does it have another function? So it actually gives it, it really infuses it nicely um, by putting it underneath and then it uh, will steam the fish with that lemon zest or lemon flavor that you wanna get. Um, if you put it on top of the fish while baking, then the breadcrumbs won't crisp up as well. So it's better to do it um, underneath so that you're not affecting the breadcrumbs getting crispy. Thank you, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that's, the only question that we have right now, it looks like Matt is getting to another question from someone else. So um, yeah, I am really jealous about how that fish looks. I think it actually, you probably needed a little more salt because you were swapping out the Parmesan um, since that adds some some uh, saltiness. So uh, yeah, I that's just my theory. But um, actually, let me take us all off the spotlight okay. here if I can. So we're all equally sharing the screen. Um, well, uh, before we close out today, does anyone have any other initial questions about um, the recipe or the meal plan that I mentioned, the Live Better Wild meal plan? Um, like I said, if you have any questions that come up um, after you sign up for it, which I really hope you do because it's a really nice um, selection of recipes and, um, you know, it's, it's just something very, very dear to my heart. Um, Feel free to reach out to the member experience team. I think like one of the links we have in there, it might be taking you to the wrong place. So I'm fixing that as we speak. But um, yeah, in the meantime, uh, I just wanna give a quick shout out to an exclusive member special that we have running right now um, for Lingcod. I know you already have um, fish in your freezer, especially if you're watching this um, for the new year, chances are your freezer is full of fish. Um, but we have a special for a species of whitefish called Ling pod. Um, some of you might be familiar with it. I actually had never cooked with ling pod or um, eaten ling pod because I live on the East Coast and before joining Wild Alaskan Company um, as part of the recipe team. But um, it's a different species of mild whitefish from Alaska that I absolutely love. It's called ling pod. That's one word. Um, 
And it's not actually a type of cod, it's a different kind of fish. I won't get too much into the nerdiness of that, but um, it kind of resembles cod um, once it's in fillets. And I think that's why it's called pink cod. Anyway, it cooks a lot like Pacific cod, but it's definitely more delicate. Um, the whole recipe team gets so excited every time this special is available um, and it rolls around. So I definitely wanted to share it with you in case you are um, already looking to put more fish in your freezer and get cooking. Um, if you like making this recipe today with Pacific cod, um, Ling cod, we'll just make a different version of it that's a little more, it's almost like a little more elegant um, than Pacific cod because it's delicate. It's hard to explain until you actually have it, but it, it's it's just a really, really delicious fish. Um, so consider adding that to your next box. Um, you can only do that if you're a member though. So if you are not a member of Wild Alaskan Company yet, uh, we've got a special offer for you. You become a member today and use the code LIVE25, that's L-I-V-E 25. I'm dropping that in chat right now. You get $25 off your first box of amazing fish from Wild Alaskan Company. And you get access to member specials like Link Hod. Um, We also have other specials running um, on any given week. So um, you can sign up to join Wild Alaskan Company on the homepage. And that is a very easy website to remember, wildalaskancompany.com, also in the chat right now. So um, yeah, next Wednesday, we are going to be teaching you how to sear a fillet of skin on fish, specifically uh, skin on wild salmon. Um, I don't know uh, actually if I'm going to be using wild coho or wild sockeye, but we'll see. Um, this is a skill that carries to any species of fish that has skin on. Um, for example, we also have sable fish. So uh, it's a very, very easy skill um, to master. You just have to know what to do. It doesn't seem obvious if you've never seared fish before. Um, we're also gonna show you how to make an herby blueberry sauce as a really beautiful topping for the fish. It's an unexpected combo, um, but it's really, really delicious and you can make it with frozen blueberries. So if you like, take a peek at the recipe um, once you get your meal plan and you can cook along with us. Um, we'll be moving at our own pace here, um, but if you can keep up, I invite you to follow along, just get all your ingredients prepped and ready. And then, um, you know, I'll try not to speed through everything, but you can follow along. It'll be fun. Um, and that'll be the closest we've been able to like cook together. So I'm excited to see if any of you decide to cook with us. So um, until then, I hope to see you. Thank you so much for spending um, the first Wednesday of the year with us and live wild, everyone. Thank you.